I am Marcus Woodson, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to make your test cafe tests easier to work with by using page object models. A page object model will be a class that we can import into a test that holds different selector definitions. This means that we can reuse selectors in multiple tests without having to rewrite the definitions over and over. So let's create a page models directory. And in this directory, we're going to create a login .ts file for our login page model. First, let's define our login class. And we need to import the selector function from the test cafe library. Now we can define a few properties in our class that represent the selectors we want to use in our tests. We'll make properties for the username, password, a login button, and a logout button. Now we can export an instance of the login class and import this instance into our test. And finally, we can replace these selector calls here with our new login model properties. So in addition to just defining properties that hold selectors on our login class, we can also define a few methods that we can also import into our test. Let's define a user login method that can be used to perform the action of entering the username and a password and submitting the login form. We can use the type text method on the test controller to actually enter information into the input fields. Um, it takes a couple of different parameters. Um, one is the selector you want to use. The next is the text you want to enter into the field. And the third optional parameter is an options object, which we're going to use to replace the text and to paste it in just so it goes in a little bit faster. We're going to repeat these same steps for the password input field. And then we're going to use the click method to click on the login button and finish submitting the form. Now we want to use this new user login method. So let's create a new test where we're going to log the user in and check to see if the logout button is displayed on the screen. We'll make sure to await the login model user login method and then we'll just await the expectation. Again, we're just going to check to see if the logout button is displayed on the page. Now let's go ahead and run these tests using yarn run e2e. This should open up a Chrome window and really quickly run through the tests. And as we can see here, both tests have passed. So now that we have passing tests, let's go ahead and see what a failing test looks like and what gets output to our terminal when a test fails. To make a test fail, let's go ahead and write a new test to check to see if the, this header text here, welcome to react, actually says welcome to react. Let's go ahead and add a new data locator to our HTML for the welcome to react title. And then we need to go into our login model and make sure we add the new property for this selector. And now we can add a new test to our suite. This test will just check to see if the title text matches with what we what we expect, which is welcome to react. Um, this has the same setup as our previous tests. We're just going to await an expectation that checks to see if the data locator of title text matches welcome to react. To make this test fail, let's go over to our app.js and let's just change this to welcome to react react. Now let's open up our terminal again and run the tests. Now we should have one failing test and there it is. Let's scroll up a little bit and see the stack trace. We see we were expecting to see welcome to react. And we had changed that to welcome to react react. Here's the line of the test failing. And we can kind of work from there. In our previous test, we logged the user in first then check to see if the logout button existed. 
That action of logging in is something that will most likely need to happen for most tests in the suite when we need to test UI after we're logged in. To make sure we don't have to write the same login steps in every test, it's a good idea to use the before each hook. Let's add a before each hook that will log the user in before we check for the logout button. Since we have a test that tests the login page and a test that tests the page after you're logged in, it might make sense to split this up into two separate fixtures. A fixture is Test Cafe's way of organizing your tests into groups. We'll have one fixture for tests where you need to be logged in and one fixture for tests where you do not need to be logged in. So let's move the logout button test to sit right beneath the login tests logged in fixture. And we'll put the user login function right inside of the before each. All tests written below a fixture belong to said fixture. So as you can see here, we have one test that belongs to the logged in fixture and two tests that belong to the not logged in fixture. Now let's go ahead and run these fixtures. And there you have it. You can see our two fixtures there, login tests, logged in and login tests, not logged in. One final thing I wanted to talk about was the speed in which the tests are running. Right now we are running the tests with one browser and Test Cafe gives us the, the option to run them in multiple browsers so that they run in parallel. So let's go ahead and set up an example for that. To simulate a test that might take a long time to run, we're just going to put a couple of five second waits in two of our tests here. And we can just imagine these five seconds are taken up doing multiple steps like logging in and navigating to a specific page, um, things like that. Now let's run these in their current state, which is in just one browser. And we see those tests took 12 seconds to run. So let's open up our test cafe configuration file and we can increase the concurrency to from one to three. This would mean three different browsers will open up and run all of our tests at the same time. Now let's rerun these tests. And as you, you can see, there's three browsers here and they finished in seven seconds. And that's it for this lesson. Thanks for listening, everybody.